I got one aardvark, one flamingo, four porcupines, two armadillos, three badgers. Badgers? Badgers? We don't need no stinking badgers! Howdy, it's Kyle talking about Wisconsin. In this video, I'll be going over various aspects of the geography of the state. I'll be talking about the cities and the urban landscape. I'll be going over the physical geography of the state to include the lakes, protected areas, overall general scenery, and some of the natural disasters. I'll be talking about some of the economic indicators of the state to include industries that drive the economy, companies that are headquartered in the state, tax rates, and agriculture. And I'll also be going over many aspects of the culture of the state to include the signature foods. So if you're interested in learning more about the Badger State, this is the video for you. Wisconsin is a Midwestern state sitting along two of the Great Lakes. To the east is Lake Michigan and to the north is Lake Superior. It has a population of about 5.9 million people, which ranks it 20th in the U.S. and is 25th in terms of area, and is the most northerly state in the U.S. that does not border Canada. It became a state in 1848 and was a 30th state admitted to the Union. The capital city is Madison. It has a population of about 264,000 people and is a very fast-growing city. It's located within Dane County, which has a population of about 560,000 people. It's the fastest-growing county in the state, and the overall Madison metropolitan area is ranked about 100th in the U.S. in terms of size. One interesting geographic quirk about Madison is that it sits along an isthmus, which is the most difficult word to say in geography, an isthmus, but it's, it's got two large lakes on each side that sits along a kind of a narrow piece of land. So the lakes on the sides of the isthmus are Lakes Mendota and Monona. It's also home to the University of Wisconsin, which is a huge university, and it's a city that's known for having more bikes than cars. State Street is the main street that goes through downtown. It's your big nightlife area, other great local shops and boutiques. And because it is a college town, there's a lot of bookstores and there's at least one record shop right downtown as well. And with it being a hip, young, and cool city, there's a lot of great outdoor activities in the city and nearby. There are over 200 miles of biking trails in the area. It's big for mountain biking in some of the state parks and state forests just outside of the city. A lot of great state and county parks right around the city. And there's a really cool spot at the end of the University of Wisconsin campus called Picnic Point. This is an area along the UW Lakeshore Preserve. It's one of the most highly educated cities in the entire country with 58% of the population being a college graduate and 26% of the population having either a master's or a PhD. And just like many other cities like Madison, being both the state capital and a college town means there's a lot of educated people in the city. So a lot of the new jobs of the 21st century want to be located where there are a lot of educated people. Madison is one of those places. A lot of jobs are coming to the city and the city's economy is doing very well. The largest city in the state is Milwaukee. It has a population of about 585,000 people. It's the 30th largest city in the US, but the population is declining. Milwaukee County, with about 940,000 people, does have a slight decline in population, but only the city of Milwaukee is really losing population. The rest of the county, some of the immediate suburbs, are gaining in population. And all of the suburban counties for Milwaukee are gaining as well, but they are gaining population fairly slowly. The Milwaukee metropolitan area has about 2.2 million people, which ranks the 33rd in the U.S. Milwaukee does have one of the lowest cost of livings for big cities in the U.S. It's right about the overall U.S. national average for cost of living. However, it does have a pretty high poverty rate at about 22%. It is known for having a pretty high crime rate, but there are a lot of cheap, rundown houses you can get in some of the inner city areas. Milwaukee is nicknamed Brew City because of its macrobrewery heritage, but there are about 20 microbreweries in the city as well. It is a city where the downtown is the heart and soul. A lot of great downtown restaurants and bars, and it's a nightlife heart of the city as well. The historic Third Ward is an area downtown. It's a little more upscale. It's got a river walk, some upscale condos, boutiques, and art galleries. East Town is the eastern part of downtown. This is where you have the central business district, most of the high rises, and also big areas for nightlife as well. River West is a really cool neighborhood near the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee campus. It's kind of a hippie gentrification area as opposed to hipster gentrification. And what I mean by more hippie type gentrification is that it's more multicultural and green oriented development. But because the city had a lot of manufacturing jobs that left the city and you had a lot of areas that were kind of derelict and empty, so there's been quite a bit of gentrification going on in Milwaukee as well. 
The area around the harbor has been gentrified pretty well. Bronzeville is another gentrified area that's predominantly black. A lot of cultural and entertainment options there. It's also home to the Summerfest Music Festival, which is one of the largest music festivals in the world. Being right there along Lake Michigan, there are some nice beaches. Bradford Beach is the most popular one in the town. There are also lots of bike paths in the city and just outside. And In the wintertime, these become snowshoeing and cross-country skiing trails. With the German heritage of the area, there's a lot of great German restaurants in the city as well. And a part of town called Clark Square has a lot of ethnic restaurants. So most of the things you hear about Milwaukee in the media are going to be pretty negative. They're going to focus on the crime and the drugs and the gang issues. But there are many parts of the town that are really nice. And it really is a pretty nice city that is underrated and isn't quite as bad as it gets the rap for in the media. The next largest city in the state is Green Bay with about 104,000 people and is growing slightly. It's located within Brown County which has about 268,000 people and it's growing slightly. Green Bay sits at the south end of Green Bay which is the largest bay on Lake Michigan. And there are a lot of great bayshore parks and areas there along the park bluffs. But Green Bay is certainly most known for the Green Bay Packers which is a professional football team. And Green Bay is the smallest city in the U.S. that has a major pro sports team. And it's also the only major pro sports team that is publicly owned. So, I mean, if it were owned by a giant corporation, they probably would have moved to a bigger city a long time ago. So the fact that it is publicly owned is why you can have a major pro sports team in a town as small as Green Bay. And its self-given nickname is the toilet paper capital of the world because there's a large paper industry located in the city. A little bit south of Green Bay is the city of Appleton, which is the sixth largest city in the state with about 74,000 people, and it's fairly slow growing. It's located within Autogamy County. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but there are 190,000 people in that county. And this region is known as the Fox City. So these are areas right along the Fox River. So Appleton is the biggest one, but there are several other smaller towns in this Fox Cities region. And you have an area called the Fox River Paper Trail, which is about 50 mile trail that goes around the area. Although a lot of it is urban streets, but a lot of it does go through many of the parks in the region. And there's a really cool pedestrian bridge called the Trestle Trail Bridge and just has a really cool look to it, just a way to cross over the river. And just a little bit south of Appleton is the city of Oshkosh, which has a population of about 68,000 people. It's growing very slowly. It's the ninth largest city in the state. It's located within Winnebago County, which has about 174,000 people. And the city is located along the west shore of Lake Winnebago, which is a large lake in the southeastern quadrant of the state. There's a nice river walk that goes along the river right downtown. And the most popular park in the city is Menominee Park, which is right along the lake, has fishing and boating, walking trails. There's a beach there and a kids amusement park. Another nice spot is called Terrell's Island, which is a wetland preserve just west of town. There's good trails and paddling around there. Continuing south, you get to the town of Fond du Lac, which is at the southern end of Lake Winnebago. There are about 44,000 people in the city. It's the 15th largest city in the state, and it is growing. Fond du Lac County has about 105,000 people, and it's also growing. And just like Oshkosh, there's a really nice lakeside park there. There's a beach and marina with restaurants and bars. North Main Street has a really nice historic district with some pretty cool shops. But overall, it's such a nice town right there at the end of the lake. So Appleton, Oshkosh, and Fond du Lac are all located right along the large Lake Winnebago. But I do think Fond du Lac is the nicest of those three towns. East of Fond du Lac along the Lake Michigan shoreline is the city of Sheboygan. There are about 47,000 people in the city. It's the 14th largest city in the state and the population is declining. Sheboygan County has about 115,000 people with a flat population growth. It has an okay downtown, nice area for walking around near the lake. And it's nicknamed the Malibu of the Midwest because it's one of the best spots in the Great Lakes to go surfing. Just south of the Milwaukee metropolitan area located along Lake Michigan is the city of Racine. There are about 76,000 people in the city. It's the sixth largest city in the state where the population is declining. However, Racine County with about 196,000 people is growing slightly. It's a little bit poor and has a little higher crime than the other cities in the state that I've mentioned besides Milwaukee. But that's not to say that it's a dump. It's just that most Wisconsin cities are pretty nice. This one just isn't quite as nice. Although the downtown is historic, it's good for walking around. And there's also some nice beaches there. North Beach is the main beach for the city. Continuing south along the shore of Lake Michigan is the city of Kenosha. There's a population of about 101,000 people. It's the fourth largest city in the state and it's growing slowly. Kenosha County has about 171,000 people and it's also growing slowly. And this is the far southeastern corner of the state. So it's right along Lake Michigan and the southern end of the city of Kenosha is the Illinois state line. 
and Kenosha is almost exactly halfway between Chicago and Milwaukee. And this area was once a major manufacturing center, but a lot of the jobs went away. So now it's more of a commuter type city. So if you're someone that maybe a couple, one person works in Milwaukee, the other spouse works in Chicago, you can live in Kenosha and commute to East. Or if you're willing to commute a larger distance, you can live in Kenosha where it's a lot cheaper to live in than either Chicago or Milwaukee. But there are some really nice outdoor areas just outside of Kenosha. There's an area called Chilwaukee Prairie, which is a 482 acre lake plain and wetland. And a really cool spot called Petrifying Springs Park. Some nice hiking, biking, and fishing. There's an artesian well there. And in the winter, there's cross-country skiing and snowshoeing. Heading west of Kenosha, pretty close to the Illinois border, is the city of Janesville. There are about 65,000 people in the city. It's the 10th largest city in the state and it's growing slowly. It's located within Rock County, which has about 165,000 people, and it's also growing slowly. It's nicknamed Wisconsin's Great Outside and is known for its parks, and it has a large arboretum and botanical garden. But similar to Kenosha, it was mainly a manufacturing city. There was a large GM plant that closed there in 2009, and now a lot of the folks that live in Janesville actually work in Madison and commute to about a half an hour south of Madison. Heading northwest, the next city I want to talk about is La Crosse. There are about 50,000 people in the city. It's the 12th largest city in the state, and its population is declining. La Crosse County has about 118,000 people, and it's growing slightly. It's located right along the Mississippi River, which is the border with Minnesota. It has a 23% poverty rate, which is really high for a Wisconsin city. That's more like what you'd expect in the south. So I'm not really sure why that is. It otherwise seems like a pretty nice city, equal to the other cities I've mentioned in Wisconsin. I like the downtown there. It's the main area for local businesses and restaurants and a spot called Goose Island, which is in the Mississippi River. There are nature trails and fishing there as well. It's also not too far from Rochester, Minnesota, which is home of the Mayo Clinic, and there's a regional campus of the Mayo Clinic in La Crosse. Heading north, the next city I want to talk about is Eau Claire. There are about 70,000 people in the city and it's growing, and Eau Claire County has about 106,000 people and it's also growing. Eau Claire is growing faster than all of the other cities in the state besides Madison or some of the Milwaukee suburbs. So amongst all the smaller metro areas in the state, it's the fastest growing one. So we've got the toilet paper capital of the world, the Malibu of the Midwest, and Eau Claire is the horseradish capital of the world. Really cool nicknames for Wisconsin cities. And it's called that because the largest grower and producer of horseradish is located right there in Eau Claire. And right about in the middle of the state is a town of Wausau which has about 38,000 people. It's the 19th largest city in the state and the population is declining. It's located within Marathon County, which has about 137,000 people and it's growing slowly. It sits right along the Wisconsin River, right in the middle of the state. And this part of the state is much more hilly, so it's not quite mountainous, but it's more rolling hills and a little more terrain than you get in the southern portion of the state. The city has lower wages and lower housing costs than most of Wisconsin, with the largest part of the economy in the region being paper manufacturing. Following the Vietnam War, many Hmong and Laotian refugees came to the U.S. and many of them came to Wisconsin. And Wausau is one of the main towns where many of the Hmong refugees went to and today the city is about 12% Hmong. And there are so many other really cool small towns in the state but I certainly can't get to all of them but the ones that I discussed here are, are the major cities of the state and the largest counties and metropolitan areas. Now I want to get into some of the physical geography aspects of Wisconsin and most of the state will be classified as either prairie or rolling hills with generally a little more variation in topography as you go more in the northern portions of the state but just like its neighbors to the west and east Minnesota and Michigan the most defining feature of the physical geography of Wisconsin is its water. Wisconsin officially has about 15,000 lakes in the state which makes it larger than the number of official lakes in Minnesota however Minnesota requires a body of water to be at least 10 acres to be considered a lake uh, much smaller designation for Wisconsin. So if they were using the exact same uh, criteria, there would be more lakes in Minnesota. But either way, Wisconsin has a ton of lakes. But the reason why there are so many lakes is the same reason why there are so many lakes in Minnesota, and that's glaciation. During the last ice age, glaciers were able to come farther south, and as it moved farther south, it picked up debris along the way. But eventually it got to the point where it was just too warm to extend south, and the overall environment was warming up. So the glaciers retreated, and as it retreated, left all that debris behind, and that's called a moraine. And sometimes when that glacier is retreating, a piece of ice in the bottom of the glacier calves off or breaks off, and it is left behind. So what happens when the glacier goes away, that little piece of ice that was left behind is formed in a depression. Eventually it melts into a lake. That's a glacial lake. 
And because you had so much glacial retreat in Wisconsin and the upper Midwest, it's why you have so many lakes in this region. In the southeastern portion of the state where the majority of the population lives is an area called the Kettle Moraine. And this is an area where there are a lot of depressions which are called kettles and the moraines of the hills. So geologically, it's nothing like the Ridge and Valley province of Pennsylvania or the Basin and Range of Nevada, but it's similar in terms of its undulating topography from hills and valleys, even though it's moraines and kettles. Generally speaking, as you go north in the state, you get a little more elevation, and the highest point in the state is called Tim's Hill. It has an elevation of 1,951 feet, and it's located in the north-central part of the state. The Mississippi River forms most of the western boundary of the state with Minnesota, and the northwestern portion of the state border with Minnesota is the St. Croix River, which, once it gets fully into Wisconsin, becomes the St. Croix National Scenic Riverway. And this is a beautiful protected area. It's a really nice spot for paddling. There are no actual national parks in the state. However, there is Apostle Islands National Lakeshore, which is the north shore of the state right along Lake Superior. The Apostle Islands are a cluster of islands in Lake Superior, and you can get around between them with a boat or you can paddle with a kayak. Something that's really cool about the Apostle Islands is that there are many sea caves there that you can paddle into. And in the wintertime, when a lot of the water is frozen, you can get to the sea caves by walking to them. Also, in the northern portion of the state is a Northern Highlands American Legion State Forest, another well-protected area, beautiful woods. There are not very many people that live in the northern third of the state, so you do have some areas of nice protected woods and some genuine true wilderness. Another interesting area of physical geography in the state are the Wisconsin Dells. And this is a relatively young river gorge. It was only formed about 20,000 years ago, and it's a nice spot with some good cliffs. People will jump off the cliffs into the river. It's a very popular spot for summer recreation. I didn't mention this when I was talking about the cities of the state, but right next to the actual physical Wisconsin Dells is the town of Wisconsin Dells. And this is a very popular destination from late spring to early fall. People go there to play in the river. A lot of amusement parks and water slides. It's kind of similar to Branson, Missouri, but just not as hot during the summer. And that's a nice segue into the climate of Wisconsin. When most people think about the climate of Wisconsin, they're going to think about the winter because it is the worst season of the year for most people. It does get really cold and has lots of snow. This is a map of the average annual snowfall in Wisconsin, and as you can tell, the snowiest parts of the state are in the north especially in those areas that are just off the shore of Lake Superior, you have some of that lake effect snow. Now compare that to the southern portion of the state, especially the southwestern portion, where you don't get that much snow. I mean, that's a good amount of snow, but it's nowhere near as much as you're going to get in the northern portion of the state or other areas along the Great Lakes. Now here's a map of the average annual rainfall for the state. It's basically the exact opposite as the annual snowfall map. But the reason why there's so much more rainfall in the southern portion of the state than the areas along the lake is because you have a lot of thunderstorm in the southern portion of the state. A lot of snow in the north, a lot of rain in the south, a lot of lakes and rivers. It's a pretty wet state. In terms of natural disasters, with all that water, the biggest concern is going to be flooding. There have been multiple major flooding events to occur this century, including 2008 and September 2010. These were major events that resulted in a presidential disaster declaration, but there are many other smaller flooding events that occur just over a small area that don't lead to a federal disaster declaration. And with all those thunderstorms you get in the spring and summertime, another big concern for the state are tornadoes. 2011 was the worst year on record for tornadoes in the U.S., and Wisconsin was not spared. In April of that year, there were several tornadoes that hit the state, including a couple of major ones. Another disaster that people in Wisconsin have to worry about are derechos. A derecho is a very strong straight-line windstorm. So you think of a cyclone storm like a tornado or a hurricane. These are rotating winds, but a derecho is just a straight-line, powerful wind gust. In 2020, there was a huge derecho event that affected the Midwest. Iowa was a state that was affected the most, but Wisconsin suffered a lot of damage as well. And the wind speeds for a derecho, including this one from 2020, were about Category 1, Category 2 hurricane strength. Fortunately, they don't occur too often, but when they do, they can do a ton of damage. Next, I want to get into some of the economic indicators of the state. And Wisconsin, along with Pennsylvania, are the only two states in the country where the largest part of the economy is general manufacturing. Other states where manufacturing is the largest part of the economy tend to be either automotive or aerospace. But for Wisconsin, it's simply general manufacturing. Wisconsin's GDP is about $358 billion per year, which ranks at 21st in the U.S. Its GDP per capita is about $48,000 per year, which ranks at 26th. Its household income is about $68,000 per year, which ranks at 28th. And its poverty rate is about 11%, which is the 17th lowest in the U.S. So for all these major financial and economic statistics, Wisconsin's pretty much right down the middle. 
Some of the largest companies headquartered in the state include S.C. Johnson and Company, which has cleaning supplies and consumer chemicals. And S.C. Johnson almost always ranks as one of the best companies to work for. It's always very, high, very highly rated. Uh, some of the other big companies in the state include Johnson Controls, not affiliated with S.C. Johnson. They do HVAC, refrigeration, smart home tech, and video surveillance. Also in the state are Cellular Logistics, who do cardiovascular cell therapies, Kohl's Department Stores, Menards Home Stores, Braun Company, who makes elevators, Kohler Kitchen and Bath Design, Manpower Staffing Firm, Fiserv Global Financial Services Technology, Ashley Furniture Home Stores, Rockwell Automation, who does industrial robotics, Schneider International, which does trucking and logistics for shipping, Harley-Davidson Motorcycles, Briggs & Stratton Gas Engines, Quick Trip Convenience Stores, Oshkosh Company, who makes specialty trucks including military and fire trucks, Snap-on Tools, Uline Shipping and Business Supplies, Jockey International Underwear and Sleepwear, American Family Insurance Company, and Northwestern Mutual Financial Services, which I believe is the largest revenue generating company in the state. So a lot of large companies headquartered in Wisconsin. And earlier I had mentioned how Wisconsin's number one part of the economy is general manufacturing, but of course agriculture is also a major part of the economy there as well. Wisconsin ranks eighth in the U.S. in terms of total agricultural output at about $12 billion per year. Wisconsin is known as America's Dairyland, and it ranks first in overall cheese production, second in milk production, and second in overall dairy production. But there's a lot more to Wisconsin ag than just dairy. The state ranks first in cranberry production, first in snap peas, third in potatoes, ninth in beef cattle, and tenth in corn. Hogs and soybeans are also important parts of the Wisconsin agricultural sector. However, the state doesn't rank in the top ten for either. And now it's time for everyone's favorite category, and that's the tax rates. Wisconsin's income tax rates are pretty high, with most people paying about 6.3%. And it also ranks very high in property taxes at 1.9%, the fifth highest in the country. Although it is worth noting that the median household value in Wisconsin is below the national average. So really high in income tax, really high in property tax, but the state ranks 43rd in sales tax at only 5.4%. So even though the overall tax burden of the state is above average, I personally do appreciate that it has a low sales tax. In terms of overall economic health, Wisconsin is doing pretty well with a very diversified manufacturing sector that doesn't rely on just one sector of manufacturing, such as automotive. There's also a very diversified agricultural sector, including dairy, which is uh, often more profitable for farmers and other aspects of agriculture. So the overall economy is doing pretty well, and Wisconsin often ranks as one of the best states in which to live. Next, I want to get into some of the signature foods of Wisconsin. And the state is known for having some really good signature foods. And with a lot of folks having German heritage there, you have a lot of German-influenced dishes as well as some German beverages. When I think of foods from Wisconsin, the first thing I think of are bratwurst and other sausage. Germans are known for meat in tube form, and German immigrants came to Wisconsin and made meat in tube form. And today, Sheboygan is known as the bratwurst capital of the world. And with Wisconsin being the number one producer of cheese in the U.S., you can expect many signature dishes in Wisconsin to incorporate cheese. These include fried cheese curds, and I don't know the whole cheese making process, but these are fried before they become what we normally eat as cheese, but either way, they're really good. It's also known for Limburger cheese, which is probably most well known for being a very stinky cheese. And the only place in the country that makes Limburger cheese is in Wisconsin. Also popular in Wisconsin are Cornish pasties, which are like fried pies. They're filled with beef and potatoes or maybe other types of vegetables and things. It's almost like a calzone, really. But uh, I was told by Michigan folks it's not pronounced pasty. It's a pasty. And what could possibly be more Wisconsin than beer cheese soup? I mean, it's literally how it sounds. It's a beer cheese soup. It's usually made with sharp cheddar, and they sprinkle popcorn on top, you know, because why not? Wisconsin in general, and specifically Milwaukee, are known for its big beer production. Miller Beer was a Wisconsin company. It's since been bought out by an international conglomerate, but it's still home to Miller Beer, and it was also home to Schlitz. So you did have some macro brews located there, but you do have some micro brews replacing those these days. And I'm not trying to be funny with this, but Wisconsin is generally known as the state that consumes the most alcohol per capita. I wanted to briefly discuss something that's pretty unique to Wisconsin, and that's the Lumberjack Games. It's home to the World Lumberjack Championships. It's where a bunch of burly men and women, lumberjacks and lumberjills, show off their axemanship, sawmanship, and just doing all kinds of cool things you can do with axes and saws, and they have log rolling. So 
They have events like this in other states, but this is definitely a Wisconsin thing. So now I want to discuss a little bit about the pro sports in Wisconsin. The Green Bay Packers have won four Super Bowl championships, and I'd also like to point out that the Minnesota Vikings are known for being the team that has lost the most Super Bowls. But I don't care about those two. What I do care about is the baseball team, the Milwaukee Brewers, and I don't really care about the team itself, but something they do during the seventh inning stretch of home games is a sausage race. And this is literally just people putting on ridiculous sausage costumes, running a race around the bases to see who can win. There are five different sausage types they use for costumes, and the crowd can cheer on their favorite sausage. And I don't know where they find the people to run the race, but I guarantee you one thing, they're drunk. So you got a bunch of drunk people running around in sausage costumes. Half the time, one of them falls over and takes other ones down with them. And let's be honest, if you were to ask 100 Americans what's the first state that you think of, if you were to think about drunk people running around in sausage costumes, they're all going to say Wisconsin. So that's my overview of Wisconsin. It's a nice state. It's usually considered one of the best overall states when you factor in a bunch of different indicators, and it really does stand out. And many of the cities in Wisconsin end up on all those lists, like top places to live or retire. So it does really end up coming up as a top state when you factor in so many things. So kind of like Minnesota to the West, two of the, I think, better overall states, but man, those winters are really brutal. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in, interested in learning more about U.S. geography. I'm talking about cities and counties and states and ranking them in all kinds of different categories, talking about cross-country road tripping, and just everything I talk about comes from a little more nerdy type perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.